G'day cobblers, welcome back to the bush. Actually, my house again today in isolation. Now, in this episode of Lock Your Hubs Four Driving, we're going to be checking out and taking apart my new best friend, <laughs> the Makita Impact Wrench. So, let's get into it. So for starters, this is the Makita DTW1002. Apparently, it's Japanese made, allegedly. <laughs> It runs the standard Makita 18 volt battery, if I can get it off. There we go. Now one handy feature you'll see here is it has a three levels of impact. So it has a high, medium and a soft impact. And also has a feature where it can spin the nut off, but not all the way. So as soon as the tool senses that the torque has come off or the load has come off the nut because it's now loose, it actually stops spinning the spindle. Now this is the half inch version. There's also a three quarter inch version as well. Anyway, without further ado, let's start pulling it apart. But before we pull it apart, what I thought might be interesting to do would be to check how much mugger-dugger it does have. Now I've loosened off this wheel nut and I've put it on the softest setting, which is number one. So the first one's just illuminated there. We'll tighten it up. And using this max torque instrument here, be able to see exactly how much torque it takes to undo it. So on the softer setting, to undo that wheel nut, 172 newton meters. Now this one only goes up to 200, so that'll give you a rough idea of how much your impact gun can do on the lower setting, 172 newton meters. It only goes up from there. So we'll start, let's see if we can get the rubber off the front here. Oh yeah, this is working for me. There we go. It was a little resistant, but we got there in the end. Now we'll see if we can take that whole gearbox assembly off. Let's see if the front's going to come off or not. Oh, was I having delusions of grandeur? Oh no, there we go. Okay. <laughs> so that is the hammer mechanism. And see if we can pull the spindle out. There we go. And there's the arbor. So as it turns, it whacks onto the outside gearbox. I'm assuming this is a gearbox there. And that's what creates the punching or, or whacking effect. I suppose that's a technical term. <laughs> which, which gets your bolt undone. And there seems to be a gearbox down there. We'll get into that in a few minutes. Okay, let's pull the casing apart. Oh yeah, and there's the insides. Firstly, let's check out the casing. So you'll notice one thing is it's actually a two-piece casing, which is unusual. Now I assume that's to isolate the battery from the vibrations that come from the motor assembly, but we'll check that out in a minute. So here's where our power comes in. And this will be the brain box. So this will be what's controlling the power to the motor. Now, this isn't a normal DC motor. You'll notice there's no brushes or anything like that. It's essentially an AC motor, a three-phase AC motor run via DC. So what happens in the brain box here, which you can't see anything because it's all potted, <laughs> It essentially switches the DC on and off through MOSFETs or switching transistors and sends the power up to here, which then controls and runs the AC motor. So this is simulating three-phase power. Let's have a look at the switch. 
So that's your forward and backward engagement. And one thing of note here is the switch. So the switch has got three lines, so it's just not an on off switch. It's actually proportional. So there'll be some sort of potentiometer or variable resistor in there. And that tells you how much you're pushing in the switch and tells you how fast the motor here should be turning. And there's also a bellow on here as well. So that's good to see. So that stops all the crap, dust, grease off the fishing rod, whatever, <laughs> from getting into your switch mechanism. Now, this is your LED. And, and they're actually semi-useful. Initially, I thought, oh, geez, that's a, that's a bit of a gimmick. But it's not. It's actually legitimately helpful. Now we'll pop him back in there and we'll see if we can get the motor assembly out. So I'll pull the motor out and one thing you notice with the casing, it's obviously very intricately made. It's um, It looks really nice. Uh, there's plenty of detail in there. The corners are nice and sharp. The, the mould obviously isn't worn out. It's also PA6GF30. So that tells me that there's 30% glass fibre reinforcement so it's a proper tool grade plastic and there's a butyl over mold in there and you see the holes in there so that's so the butyl has the rubber coating there has some way of keying into the mold itself they're good but the problem of course is eventually they're, they're not great with petrochemicals so grease and oil and petrol and diesel and whatnot will eventually make this essentially delaminate from the rest of the casting, which is a bloody shame. <laughs> now, let's see if we can check out the motor assembly here without completely destroying it, because I do want to use this afterwards. All right, yeah, so what we got here is a planetary gear set. So this is similar to what you'd find in, let's say, the end of a winch. So it's very similar to a winch motor gear assembly. The reason they use planetary gear sets is they work well, they're compact, and they have a high reduction in a very compact assembly. Okay, so let's show you how a planetary gear set works. So it comprises of four main parts. So we got our sun gear here, right in the middle, that little fella there. Then we got our ring gear around the outside there. Here we have the planetary gears so we have the three planetary gears and they're driven by the sun gear right in the middle there so that turns those and then we have the carrier and it's it's a compact assembly they, they work they seem to work really really well and you'll find them also in automotive uh automatic transmissions as well and obviously we have the dirty great big spring here so when it's hitting when the hammer in the anvil, see if we can get that out there. When the hammer hits, this then forces that back, springs it down, and then hits again and again and again until your nut is undone, hopefully. <laughs> or makes you a socket very, very hot from all the work it's doing. Anyway, all right, so that's the inside of. The Makita half inch impact gun. Actually, what would be interesting is to do a bit of high speed footage with the other camera of it taking off a nut. Yeah, I might do that. If it works. Now, here we are at a thousand frames a second, so that's 40 times slower than real life. And you can see the socket being bashed by the anvil as the hammer moves forward and back on that spring and eventually. It's going to loosen off the nut enough that it's going to start turning. And there we are, we're turning and undoing the nut. So that's how an impact works in slow motion. And you'll be able to see that it actually stops, even though I'm pulling the trigger in hard in a second, without the nut coming all the way off. And now we're stopped. If there's anything you'd like to know about these guys, or any tools you'd like to know about and see disassembled like this one, Give us a shout out in the comments and we'll see if we can get it sorted out. Now guys, if you like this video, don't forget to give it the old thumbs up. If you didn't, by all means, give it a thumbs down twice. Thanks guys. 
We'll see you in the next one. I'm going to work out how to try and get this thing back together. <laughs>